थ्री टू वन नाउ सर वी कैन स्टार्ट थैंक्स good morning everybody uh, today we'll uh, start with the third session on the techniques in pediatric orthopedic trauma today's uh, session on uh, radial neck fracture techniques once again so uh, the first talk we'll just we have changed the order first talk uh, will be taken by molin sir on the close reduction technique for radial neck fracture and then the second uh, talk will be taken by virat sir on close reduction and matsu technique and the third talk will be by sandeep sir on intrafocal pinning for the radial neck fractures so i'll just introduce our uh, faculty and then we'll start uh, virat sir uh, he's a director of children Orthopedics Care Institute, uh, Pravira Hospital in Nagpur, and he's also the secretary of the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of India. Uh, after doing his MS and DNB Orthopedics, he did his pediatric orthopedic training from UK and South Korea. Sir has uh, pioneered many surgical techniques, especially in neglected club foot, uh, radial nerve stenosis, and CP. And he's also the recipient of uh, Best Clinical Research Award for these surgical techniques. he has also been recognized by the government of maharashtra as the best person working in childhood disability and uh, sandeep sir uh, sandeep patwardhan sir did his ms orthopedics in 1995 from sain hospital mumbai and then he did his fellowships from singapore germany and in usa and he heads the pediatric orthopedic unit in sancheti hospital pune and sir is involved in pediatric orthopedic training and teaching and research via ifix and various trauma courses and the posse events and we want to thank our faculty for taking our, their time and accepting our invitation so uh, we'll start with our first uh, session on close reduction technique uh, molin sir you can please share your screen yeah i think uh, did you stop sharing um... yes sir i'll stop Hi Viraj, good morning Malayan, good morning Jans, good morning. Yeah, so there are few videos in this, and if it does not play well, then I'll move out of the window and restart and all this. So we are going to talk about uh, uh, displaced radial neck fractures. Now this kind of uh, completely toppled off radial neck may have four options: close reduction. K wire assisted uh, joystick or intrafocal pinning, uh, which Sandeep is going to talk. Metazoo's technique, uh, Viraj is going to talk, and open reduction. For very uh, <clears throat> long time, people were thinking that this most severely displaced uh, fracture would need uh, something intrafocal or, uh, in rare instances, open reduction. But uh, we could develop and close reduction techniques, which I am going to talk about. Conventionally, the Jude classification is used to assess the displacement and severity of radial neck fracture. Where type one and two, where the angulation is less than thirty degrees, it can be conserved because of remodeling potential. When it is between thirty and sixty degrees, a close reduction can be tried with different maneuvers and methods. But when it comes to type four, where the angulation is more than sixty degrees. all this conservative treatment had failed and so either a percutaneous uh, or open reduction with instruments uh, or implants have been tried and uh, this techniques are many uh, close reduction techniques peterson manuva kaufman or israeli nahar torch and so on but if you read this papers this is true for jude 2 and 3 and none of this uh, uniformly achieved anatomic reduction jude type 4 in this ortho kids technique of close reduction we are going to discuss close reduction for jude type 4 a and b and thus it means that for type 2 and 3 we can definitely use this technique we are we are interested more in most severely displaced radial neck fractures so first let's see the technique at a glance uh, through this uh, media if it plays or else i'll go out and show you so this animation is uh, extremely good which will so for a moment i'll stop sharing this screen and i'll show the video from outside then
Hmm. So I'll just make a full screen. Connected to three zeros. Anyway, so what I'll do is I'll open the folder and place uh, play those videos. But uh, biomechanical basis of this reduction technique is that that we try to uh, use ligamentotaxis to re reduce the radial neck fractures, uh, and thus it means that the ligament should be intact. And there should be isolated radial neck fracture. If there is an associated elbow dislocation, then many a times these uh, ligaments are torn and this technique may not work. So let me open the folder, give me a minute and sorry for this. Uh... <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so you can see now, right, Joans? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. this is an animation which shows that the first step of this uh, injury or reduction technique is to see the radial neck in profile. And so you have to maneuver or rotate the forearm in different angles under image intensifier. And this suggests when you see as a rectangular piece, that's a profile. And this is a position in which the fracture would have happened. Then you give the virus force by giving counter pressure from the elbow and give longitudinal traction. And then with the thumb, you give manual pressure on the radial head and convert a type 4 to type 3. And the final step is you flex the elbow in pronation, which would align the uh, radial head completely anatomically. I'll replay this. So the first step is to visualize the radial neck in profile is it not progressing huh it started yeah so most of the times it you need a bit of uh, pronation more than mid, uh, full supination and you see the rectangular piece then you give varus force by the counter traction once you do the virus force the lateral recess opens up you give longitudinal traction and then you push with your thumb you locate the radial head both in ap and lateral view and then uh, with the final pronation supination maneuver uh, pronation and flexion maneuver the annular ligament and all these collateral ligaments become tight and it reduces fully so this pronation uh, uh, is very important and now I'll show you this technique on a patient. So <clears throat> so this uh, this is a six years old patient with Jude type three radial neck fracture. Step one: positioning on radio lucent table. And this is with my commentary on JBJS, so you can listen to it and we'll talk about it later. A separate radiolucent arm table is used. Step 2. To view the radial head in profile. Degree of forearm rotation is identified under image intensifier to localize the maximum angular displacement. The forearm is placed in position where the radial head is seen as a rectangular piece under the image intensifier. This is a pre-injury position of the forearm. In this position, further reduction maneuver should be performed. Step three, longitudinal traction. In the forearm position where the radial head is seen in profile, longitudinal traction is applied by the surgeon by holding the distal forearm and counter traction is provided by the assistant through proper 
assistant should give counter pressure on the medial side of the joint line while the surgeon simultaneously gives traction and varus force. This maneuver distracts the lateral joint space. Step 5. To locate the radial head and thumb pressure application. Now the surgeon should locate the radial head in both the sagittal and coronal views with the help of image intensifier, a persistent fragment with the distal fragment. Step 6. Flexion pronation maneuver. Once the radial head is partially aligned with the metaphysis, the surgeon flexes the elbow and simultaneously pronates the forearm. This maneuver obliterates the posterior and lateral joint space and aligns the radial head anatomically with the metaphysis. Step 7 is confirmation of reduction on image intensifier. At this stage, the reduction of the radial head should be checked in both the coronal and sagittal views in the full range of elbow flexion and extension, keeping the forearm in pronation position. The anatomically aligned radial neck does not need any form of fixation. Step 8, plaster application. The so the plaster is applied usually in uh, pronation lip, uh, a bit more than uh, mid prone. And you have to check your position that in which position the radial head remains uh, completely reduced. What I have seen that the moment you reduce and supinate, there will be a lateral translation. So you want to avoid that. So radiologic correlation, uh, this is AP view of elbow of the same fracture which I had uh, shown in the first. Uh, after longitudinal traction and thumb pressure, we converted type 4B to type 3. And with flexion pronation uh, maneuver, it got completely reduced. And this is one year follow up. Sir, your screen, you have to share. Oh, your screen is not seen. Okay, I'll I'll do it in a moment. Yeah. Now, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so this is the uh, for one year follow up of that uh, child which I was talking and. Uh, this is one more example, 4B. This is most uh, completely toppled off, as you can see. And again, we could reduce with the same technique. Uh, and it does not need any uh, implant fixation because it is very stable. We keep plaster on for three weeks, and that is uh, enough. Sometimes you will come across very young children with uh, partly visible radial head. Uh, this is three years old. Uh, and the injury was uh, five to seven days old. So it was very stiff. So what you can do is you take contralateral x-ray and that shows the radial neck. Then you do an arthrogram, which would outline the radial uh, head. So you know this is Jude type 4 injury. In this case, it was moving together. So it was partly stuck. And so I did intrafocal K-wire, blunt K-wire assisted or kind of osteoclysis. And once it was done, it uh, got reduced completely and we uh, reduced with our technique and it was uh, immobilized in pronation. This technique has been published in Indian Journal of Orthopedics and uh, in JBJ's Essential Surgical Techniques as well. So you can have a look and I'll share those techniques with you. So I, I think I, am, I have finished my talk here. What, where it does not work is this, you know, the Jeffrey type fractures like this fracture where associated elbow dislocation. We tried to reduce it and I found that elbow is dislocated. And I could not, uh, uh, we could not reduce it. And then we uh, required open reduction in this case. Right. So I'll stop here and I would like to have questions if they are there. Yeah. Good morning, Sandeep. So for last seven, eight years, I have not done uh, intrafocal or metazoo for isolated radial neck fracture at our center. And every now and then I receive uh, uh, feedbacks from colleagues who are doing this and they are very happy because Sorry, conventionally sir. we used to fix them. Now you don't need to fix them. Dolim, can I ask you the question? Yeah, please. Yeah. So this the, the pronation principle is same like what uh, is uh, it, it, it the periosteum acts like a hinge or it gives stability. Is it the same principle you are using for the pronation? Yeah, it, it's not periosteum, but it is it's the ligament. 
the mm -hmm. radial neck position is controlled by radial right. and ulnar collateral right. ligaments right and the annular ligament Correct. so when we supinate the forearm these ligaments become loose and it it the radial head can translate and angulate but the moment you you uh, align it partially and then you flex it you are tightening the posterior capsule so posterior recess is closed and then you pronate and flex so all these ligaments become tight and it will reduce the radial head anatomically and in this position you flex extend in ap and lateral you see the radial neck will not move so you just plaster it and in three weeks time you remove it so we have done now around 30 35 cases where uh, at one year follow-up they all resumed full supination and pronation so we had a fear like sandeep uh, would say that if you move immobilize in pronation, they will lose supination. So, Sandeep, I have not seen this in uh, these radial neck fractures. In forearm, I have uh, done your uh, approach. In two weeks, I'll come back and uh, convert in supination plaster. But for radial necks, we keep it for three weeks and then they resume the movement. That is the position needed to, you know, anatomically align it. Thank you, sir. Sir, as of now, there are no questions. Yeah. So we can proceed to the next talk. Uh, Virat, sir, you can share your screen, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it visible, Molling? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, thanks, Molling, for inviting me for uh, delivering this lecture. So, Molling has demonstrated an excellent method, his own technique of how do we reduce the fracture. Now, this technique, uh, which I'm going to speak about, is uh, Metezio's technique, is a France, uh, is a person, French person who has established this technique way back in 2005, he published in uh, Injury Journal. So, uh, basically, as Molin has mentioned, that these fractures, if they are if they are presenting around 30 degree or maybe 40 degree of angulation, they many times they remodel very well and they don't require any kind of uh, reduction manual also if the child is small. Uh, but if the angulation is more than 40 degrees, and what <clears throat> we all know that if we try to openly reduce this uh, these fractures there are very ch high chances of avn because the periosteal the, the blood supply goes from the periosteum that metaphyseal area because the top portion is completely covered by the cartilage so it is only the metaphyseal area where the periosteum is there and from there only there is meta um, their blood supply so we should try to preserve the blood supply as far as far as possible and for that only most of the authors now agree that if you can reduce this fracture by any kind of close methods like Mollin's technique or maybe <clears throat> what Sandeep is going to speak about how this matters your technique nothing like it because it it gives the best function uh, to the child right so this what is this technique matters your technique in his technique it is uh, we had to introduce first the nail or the k-wire here use the k-wire basically um, like similar what we do for the radial shaft fractures so you take a k-wire um, approximately around 1 to 1.2 to 2.5 millimeter diameter and then you contour it the the tip you have to contour or bend little more because you are going to get the alignment for the the fragment the fracture fragment for that take a one centimeter skin incision at the distal radial metaphysis as we take for any uh, radial nailing for the tense nailing what we do uh, while taking the incision your incision has to be one centimeter proximal to the physis that is a distal radius physis you have to go a little proximal to that dissect out the soft tissue preserve the superficial branch of the radial now go up to the bone then make either with the help of the owl or you can with the help of the drill you just make an entry point uh, now the entry point is approximately around two centimeter proximal to the growth plate or the uh, distal um, uh, the radius uh, uh, physis right so you are you are going little proximal to the physis 
so that you're not damaging or your nail tip should not damage the um, physis in the future. And then you introduce the nail or introduce the um, K wire and then you go proximally. So once you go proximally, this is a original diagram uh, from his own paper, Matizio's paper. You gently hammer the K wire or nail which you have put and then that 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 K wire engages the proximal fragment over here. And then again, gently you tap it or you can just, so there's just hammer it or make you, you can introduce more so that it lifts the fragment like that. So some kind of, maybe some kind of destructive force you are applying. Mm -hmm. And once you have applied this, then once you are entered into that, and then you have to rotate the K wire by 180 degree. So you rotate the K wire or your nail, which you have introduced by 180 degree. So that should reduce the fracture like that. Okay. That is a technique which is um, in, in the original paper, Matt as you have mentioned. And he has demonstrated radiologically as well. So here we have put the nail and then that has engaged the um, fragment of the radial head over here. And you keep on little distracting or you can hammering or licking, uh, advancing your nail. And then you rotate it completely here. So it reduces the fracture. And this is the lateral view which is there. So you have to then you have to immobilize the um, um, arm in a, in a slab for a two to three weeks. You take off the slab after two to three weeks and then you have to mobilize, start mobilization. And you have to remove the pin after eight weeks. That is what Deha has mentioned in his original paper. So this is how we take the incision. Now I am using this uh, flexible nail. So tense nail, what you can say. You can use a long K wire in whichever way, whatever, I mean, you are, it is available with you. So when you introduce it, you have to be proximal to the, this is a, a, a distal radial growth plate, which is there. So you have to um, prevent any damage to that. And then you have to be proximal over here. And then you introduce like that. Okay. And once you introduce, see this video where now this, uh, after introduction, and once you reach to the, Fragment, you still keep on advancing gently so that you're not uh, gently, you're going advancing. And then once you are engaged it nicely into the proximal fragment, then you rotate it by 180 degree. <clears throat> Sorry for this, not maybe very good uh, kind of uh, image uh, picture. Then you rotate it, in the, rotate the nail by 180 degree so that the, <clears throat> the fragment is reduce nicely you can see now right so that is the original technique what uh, Matthews has described but if you are not able to achieve the reduction like this like the cases like this where we suppose you have tried Mollins method and you have tried uh, to shoot the nail and try oh. to disengage this fragment and then you are not able to get a reduction so what next there are certain tips I would like to mention we many times we try with the Ishmash bandage it was beautifully and then Joystick assisted technique, which maybe Sandeep is going to speak more about that. You can use a simple mosquito forceps also by just giving a small nick if or not, so that you are preserving the vascularity and uh, periosteum. This is an example of use of Eshmarch bandage. Help in the so we just tightly tie and then we it uh, it works beautifully. This is an example where this in this uh, patient. It was the reduction was not coming and with the Ishmael band you can see it has reduced and this is a follow up you can see right and then we have to pull out the nail. Joystick assisted reductions like Molin also has mentioned there is no harm in using a simple K wire like this to get the radial into its position. Sometimes you can use a mosquito forcep like this also. And sometimes very rarely the displacement is very severe and you are not getting, sometimes you might use two KOS also as a joystick to reduce it. These are the case example, kind of severe displacement you can see. The, the here from this, here the fragment has moved like this over here. So yeah. manage with the... the, the, the so with this, now see it was reduced like that. <clears throat> And this is a follow up. You can see there is good union at two months. Now, this is an example of two KYS where it was not coming. Sometimes this was a little old injury. She presented at seven day of the trauma. 
and then uh, <clears throat> we have to use a two K wires to get it to get the reduction. This is how we inserted the nail, and this is how we are getting the reduction. And you can see the entry point which is there, and hardly there is <clears throat> uh, just the puncture wound of uh, joystick. Right, that is K bar we are used for the management. This is we are reduce the fracture closely, and this is the entry point of the radius nail. So with, this, uh, so with this, so with this mini needle technique, see the post of image now. It has reduced very nicely, and this is a three month, and then see the alignment which is there. So these kind of severely displaced fractures also can be. This is after nail removal. She had a full uh, function, so they usually have very good function. You know the full rotations and then. Uh, so, in summary, Matizio's technique or mini invasive technique, they work wonderfully. If you preserve the vascularity, you are definitely going to reduce the chance of AVN. They give good results and it does not require any kind of special training. Any orthopedic surgeon who is good enough subject wise to how to reduce and align, I think uh, they work very beautifully. So thank you all for the kind attention. Any questions, I can answer them. Yes, sir. So there's one question from Dr. Tashwin. Uh, he's asking if patient comes after 14 days of injury, which procedure should we use? 14 days. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, 14 days is really difficult uh, to get with uh, mini invasive or maybe kind of from by the close. You can try. I mean, uh, but uh, in if you are not getting, uh, just making a small knee and then try to reduce with the help of uh, mosquito forceps, as I mentioned, or maybe kind of a dura retractor you have small, that can that can help to some extent. If at all it is not possible, the fracture is very severely displaced, then you are then you have no choice. You have to go for the open reduction. So another question from Morin sir: uh, When do you start mobilizing after Matsu? technique yeah usually i started after three weeks so in his original paper he has mentioned two to three weeks is a time when you start mobilizing the elbow and you have to pull out the wire uh, at after eight weeks so minimum eight weeks he has advised to keep uh, the wire over there or the nail over there yeah so like you know hmm. some people they would say that uh, we do metazoo because we can start early mobility but usually in practice, you know, most of us, they, after matters you, they, they mobilize after three weeks, even for the isolated injuries. So for the next time you can try our technique, Viraj. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever displacement is there, if it is stable, then there is no need to put implants. And anyways, you have to immobilize for three weeks and, uh, in a year's time, none of them have restricted movement. So why to, you know, we had a, we, we had uh, this resistance, you know, that uh, is met as you have explained, then it can be treated only with some sort of implant. It will be unstable, but it is not like that. So you do it and then you will, uh, you'll be very happy that we can fix it with, without. Uh, yeah, so I agree with Maulin. So basically orthopedic is a subject whenever, if best what you can do for the child, you know, for, for any, any child, for any factor that will, I will say. And as far as mini invasive way or by the close method, if you can do nothing like it, but that doesn't mean that it's a blank. It is not a blanket statement that for everything you have to go close. It is not like that. Even Molly will agree with that. So if you are able to achieve it, the good reduction and good function, nothing like that. If you're not comfortable, there is no harm in using going and uh, for the other techniques. What I agree, what you said, what I mean to say is that uh, mental block that this is severely yeah. displaced. So it cannot be closed. That should be removed. Yes, yes, yes. And for anything to that we have, we should have faith in that uh, uh, technique, you know. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the talk. Uh, we don't have any further questions as of now, so we can proceed to the third talk. Sandeep, sir, you can share your screen, please. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Malin, if you don't mind, I have uh, two small presentations. Yeah, yeah. You, you. You One it. is about the technique, second is about some complication and its management, which somebody asked a question, delayed presentation. 
yeah so and in this metazu and those all have some complications so anyway so you can uh, you will be surprised even close reduction has complications yeah i'll show you that doing nothing also has complication okay can you see the screen yes sir all right so just this is something which i was doing since 2006 um i think through all three talks what you will realize for radial neck fractures is that it's a very very delicate fracture and number 2 is that you need to know what is acceptable and what is not right so all of you who are starting off in your pediatric trauma practice <clears throat> please remember radial neck fracture metaphyseal fracture is usually solder 2 rarely solder 3 if it is associated with dislocation it's a very complicated issue that's a totally different ball game as maulin bhai has already said and trying to get an acceptable reduction which the body can remodel is the aim it need not be a perfect reduction all the time right so most of the radial neck fractures which have 30% translation 30% angulation it's a rule of 30s can be accepted especially if the child is younger and they will remodel pretty well but if it is displaced you need to bring down that angulation or displacement to less than 30% and then you will have a good result so after you start with either the eshmark bandage or molin's technique and if you get a satisfactory reduction i totally agree that the periosteal hinge locks very well and in flexion the radial head is stabilized between the shaft and the capitulum in 90 degree flexion and implants are not needed but if you are struggling to get a reduction you can use an intrafocal pin for managing this kind of a uh, displacement so it's a selected group where there is lateral angulation minimal comp uh, combination with an intact head and it essentially means that you enter like soft kapanji lower end radius you enter the fracture site from just next to the ulna posterior laterally and then go into the fracture and use the k wire to joystick and lever the proximal fragment into position and then just pass the wire into the shaft to engage the cortex such that it is buttressing the radial head so there is no separate implant here it is that simple k wire which is holding it for some time and then in about two two weeks in the opd you give a plaster and in two weeks in opd make a window and pull that wire out it's a temporary stabilization along with the reduction technique so this is an example where you have angulation which exceeds about 30 degrees so i need to bring this aligned to the capitulum so this is a siam shoot on the skin i have kept the wire just to just to have an orientation as to at what level do i need to enter the fracture and then we pass the k wire in such a way that it goes directly into the fracture we are not manipulating the head target the fracture site and i have seen quite often that it is the shaft which moves towards the ulna the in towards the interosseous membrane so you have to just lever it out and with that leverage fulcrum is on into the fracture you will get the reduction and the same wire so i do this on a t handle it's a 2 mm k wire on a t handle and then you elevate that and just gentle rotations you will engage the opposite cortex and then you leave that wire outside bend it a little bit so it doesn't move and give a plaster so this is what we do and that is how it heals and uh, you will get a decent result this is another case just to show the same technique uh, i had published it in maharashtra journal of orthopedics in 2006 so pretty long ago uh, after that we have not written much about it and uh, this is another way um, case where we have done i think an arthrogram also no this is no arthrogram so again reduction intrafocal uh, reduction and the same k wire holding the cortex yeah this is the arthrogram again you can see that i have always seen that the shaft moved toward the ulna okay the radial head is pretty much there but something is uh, obstructing and you need to get that shaft back under that metaphysis of the radial neck so you put the k wire there bring it back you have the arthrogram which can help you as a guide that's pretty well so it's the use of k wire as a leverage 
to get a reduction as well as a temporary stabilization. Uh, if you feel it is unstable, metazoo technique can be added to hold that fragment and stabil mobilize early. But we all agree that the use of open techniques is not really a good idea. It's pretty easy and you can try it in your practice after you have first done simple close reduction maneuvers, Patterson's method or Mollins method or Eshmark method doesn't matter. It's it, The idea is to do it close, preferably not to disturb the hematoma and not damage the periosteum and vascularity because otherwise you can get problems. Now, somebody asked about delayed presentation. So this child came to me after three weeks. So this is a three week old, you can see calcification there and some kind of attempt at healing. And this was totally wrote. It is more than 90 degrees. It just toppled off. So here, what we did was we used both techniques because uh, it was not possible to do any close reduction at three weeks. So what we did was I used the joystick method and reduced the angulation as much as I could by, I could use the KY to softly break the callus. And then going into the fracture, I, I tried to maneuver that fragment back into position. And we got a reasonable reduction in the earlier 90 degree to, I brought it to maybe 45 or 50 degrees. And then I used the metazoo technique because I was not getting a full reduction just by this. So then I use the metazoo technique. You can see the wire here. And again, metazoo is not very simple. Um, Viraj has showed you nicely <coughs> a 2 mm uh, tens nail or a wire with a bend. You have to maneuver it. The proximal fragment is really, really small and metaphysial hold is not very, very solid. So it is ne necessary. I also agree that three weeks of casting is necessary. But again, this is a tool you can use that curve to gently tease that head back into a better position so that uh, your uh, reduction is held and eventually pass it. Might take some time, but eventually you should be able to pull that fragment after doing it a couple of times. Also use thumb pressure simultaneously to push that in and create some varus so that you open up the lateral side and gradually, gradually, a little patience, you can get that reduction. Yeah. So this is finally uh, after I was happy, and I then hammered that you you can't really uh, have hold unless you punch that into the metaphysis. Then you hold it, and then give a plaster for about fifteen days to three weeks, which should be sufficient. And that is how we got the reduction, and that is the final X-ray and healing. So. Even in the old fracture, it is a nice idea to try to be as uh, minimally invasive and conservative as possible. So it should not be uh, that I will follow X technique or Y technique or Sandeep's technique or Viraj technique or Molin technique. Understand the principle, bring down the angulation and displacement to what is acceptable. Do it by the closed method or use minimally invasive techniques and use a plaster. As Colin has said, it doesn't cause much of stiffness at all. So that is not really an issue. And this I show you some interesting cases that came to me and uh, just to highlight the complications that can happen. So you can see this nine year old girl who was treated in a plaster slab. You can see that this looks quite acceptable. Pauline, you agree this is not a bad thing. Uh, wo e, fir, e, e stop karke share karna okay, I'll share. So, yeah. Can you see? Yeah, we can see okay. now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sandeep, so, you want to take some questions about this technique first? Uh, no, we'll do it together. Okay. I'll just okay, finish fine. this. Yeah. yeah. So, this, this nine year old girl, no, she came with x rays to me. She had come for a different problem, which I'll show you. So do you think this is acceptable, Maureen? <coughs> she is nine years old, girl, right? Yeah, nine years old. This is the fracture. This Does she have any, how, how much uh, after the treatment? No, she came to me for something else. So this was her first. No, what I mean to say is what, what time has elapsed from the index injury? That's... Now it is about uh, four and a half months. 
Hmm. So, but a, this was her primary X-ray, which to me looked pretty reasonable. Okay, yeah, it is not yeah. badly displaced. The only thing is, it is not showing healing, you know, which we. No, no. This to... was the fresh X-ray. That's what I'm saying. She came to me for something okay. else, which I'll show you. But this was her primary oh, X-ray. Yeah. So this, so this, what do you would do? So I would immobilize this in pronation, Sandeep. Okay. This is what I've seen. Okay. That you immobilize. But conservative. Yeah, I... we we can conserve, but. See again, we need to understand. If you just immobilize in supination, no, some this I have seen translation after plaster, so this will get complicated. But if you immobilize in pro mid prone, then it would stay like this. No, okay, that's fine. So yeah. what I am asking is conservative treatment. No, yeah, conservative treatment. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, see, the X-ray everybody will feel that. See, this was happen. treated in plaster, and see what has happened. Phenostosis kind of thing. Yeah, she came to me for this problem. And mm -hmm. she had no like, pronosupination. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. the radial head still looks nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that yeah. shaft has cross-united to the ulna. And so, this is without any intervention. No wire, no reduction. Just a plaster was given by the primary treating. So, surgery. Sandeep, if you see this, no, this, is, this happens sometimes because now if you trace the outline of the uh, the shaft, yeah, there is more translation than exactly. which was so earlier. That's what I was trying to point out that it is the shaft which goes towards the ulna yeah. very and often. And what we take as angulation of the radius might be translation of the shaft. We don't take that into consideration. And then, yeah. Sandeep, what I what happens is there is an uh, interosseous membrane gets ossified. Yeah. There is some injury to the interosseous membrane. It yeah. gets ossified. So please don't go away thinking that conservative kiya to sab kuch thik hota hai. All radial neck fractures can be troublesome. Ne, Sandeep, Wait, mes message here aap ko baut clearly dena hai ki you hmm. immobilize I mean mid prone and that this translation would not happen. Ne, ne, mere ko itna message dena hai ki radial neck fracture is tricky. It is not very straightforward. Otherwise, baut zada hum log kabhi kabhi uske baujud bhi aisa ho sakta. So, Good results with uh, Sandeep, aapka awaaz break ho hai. I, I don't know whether everyone is experiencing yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Voice is breaking, Sandeep. Thoda okay, sandeep. can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll go slow. So, what happens is that in congenital radial nerve synostosis, excision of the synostosis is not shown to be great results. Derotation osteotomies may be better. But in traumatic synostosis, you can go ahead and resect the synostosis and put a fat graft which is what we did here and that that gave us very good results. This was the case where we excised that synostosis and restored the range of motion. On table it was complete range of motion and that has been retained over a period of time. This was put in a slab. We put fat, I put uh, bone wax and then put a fat graft in between to prevent reossification. And this girl is now uh, at two months post-op. She's got her full range back with full pronosopination and they're quite happy. So uh, this was just to highlight the thing that even conservatively done cases, there can be trouble. And these synostoses which are post-traumatic have been published and described. And you should be aware of those. Yeah. Now let's have questions. So, Sandeep, for, like, I know the answer, but for the fellows, now, there are certain radial neck fractures where the radial head is anteriorly displaced or the shaft has gone posteriorly. Yeah. And we know that posterior interosseous nerve goes from front. So, how would you safeguard uh, your intrafocal pain? So, every time you make that entry, you know, you go close to the ulnar border from behind, front and engage. We see you are entering the fracture. The wire should never go from front. Antro yeah. uh, sorry, anterolateral entry is not acceptable. You go close to the ulnar border, and from there 
it's you have to just make sure you enter the vector state and then use that as a lever. You can lever both the head fragment or the shaft fragment. Yeah. So the message is, you know, if you should post-introsious nerve goes anteriorly, so your intrafocal pin should not go too much of anterior. Uh, otherwise, it may damage. Sometimes people have used a bit blunt wire to, as Viraj has shown, as to do the intrafocal thing. Now, uh, Harish has been asking a question, and I agree, Harish, that if you take only isolated AP view, you might see that displacement is little less. Just like SCAFI, uh, if you do a rotation or you, when you see under image intensifier, you will see the true angulation and an X-ray, oblique X-rays where you see the radial head in a, as a rectangular piece or in profile, that is the actual displacement. What I have seen some colleagues, they accept 30 degree uh, angulation, but that is not a true uh, angulation. So take oblique views and see the radial head in rectangular piece in profile and consider that as a actual displacement and you might use one of these techniques to bring it to less than 30 degree, which is a remodelable angulation. Yeah, so, and it's okay to use more than one technique. It's okay to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to use a combination. combination of techniques. Nothing is foolproof. Yeah. So I just saw that uh, many a times in younger children, you know, in five days, it starts gluing. Yeah, coming up. So you do this uh, osteoclysis thing, put a wire and then you reduce it. So Harish, can you tell us about this coils view? I am not aware about this. Uh, is just the rotation view of uh, or internal or external oblique? What is it? So basically, it's a oblique view where uh, you keep the limb on a table, you flex the elbow to 90 degrees okay? mm -hmm. and uh, you shoot the x-ray beam at 45 degrees. Basically, the forearm is in supination. It will helpful in cases where children are not able to extend the elbow. So, mm -hmm. your elbow is on, the limb is on table, flat on the table. Elbow is at 90 degrees. You try and supinate so that the thumb is pointing towards the ceiling and you shoot, uh, the beam is projected at 45 degrees. Yeah. Uh, so it will give an actually good, good view of capitulum as well as uh, radial uh, neck. Sometimes it can be used also for Montesia lesions to assess the reduction. In my, you know, this reduction techniques I have been doing, what I have seen, the radial neck would be would look in profile when you do internal 45 degree uh, pronation from the full supination. So this kind of internal oblique view of forearm will show you the true angulation. Yeah, so EI and Before. palsy post op incidents in your series, Sandeep sir and Virat sir. Sandeep, you want to come yeah. in? Any incidents of PI and palsy? No, no, no. Sorry, I, I didn't, uh, I was not paying attention. Rajiv's question What is the incidence of PI and palsy in your series? But no, nothing, zero. Nothing. We, as, as a part of hydrogenic complication, zero. But uh, fracture dislocations, you can get it as a. He is he is asking about uh, uh, iatrogenic. So if you safeguard, yeah. as Sandeep said, you pass via from posteriorly on the ulnar border, it will not produce. So it is a valid question that we should avoid PIN. Yeah. Any any uh, further questions? Metazuka complication nahi dikha Sandeep bhai. I have so, a, meta, so I like I said I don't do metazoo routinely. Yeah. My intrafocal works well. I don't additionally stabilize. And this was a three week old and I was not getting full reduction. Yeah. So I was a little keen to try that also and it, I have done it a couple of times only. I don't. I'm not a very big yeah. fan because I tell you what it adds another incision display. And the parents sometimes are saying fracture to either hai, operation to either kiya hai. In addition to that, uh, second problem of implant removal is there. This pin I can pull out in the OPD by making a window in the plaster. Yeah. The second thing with the metals, you some I have seen a few cases where it has penetrated the articular cartilage. Yeah. It yeah. Has it's not it. a very easy thing. Huh? I'm it's you. not easy thing. And uh, the length of this nail, you have to, the cutting of nail precisely over the flare is also an issue. And uh, yeah. Upper one is coils. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. 
So all in all, this is a very, very specialized fracture and it should deserve, get some more attention that it deserves and try to be as conservative and minimally invasive as possible. Yeah, because uh, the, the the complications most of the times are associated uh, because of the trauma itself, you know. Yeah. I mean, the fracture is severely displaced. So already the vasculitis is gone. Suppose the periosteum also has stripped to a great extent. So whatever you do, you can land up with avian. That is one. And secondly, what Sandeep has also mentioned, that synostosis is another problem. When you get a very, very severe displaced fragment, and when you try to do best reduction and whatever, there, but then you should be still prepared for the synostosis. That is there. One like one thing I would like to tell all these colleagues is many a times if you do clinical examination well, you will know that this is an isolated radial neck fracture. So isolated radial necks, I have seen the swelling and tenderness is only on the lateral side along the radial neck. When it is associated with elbow dislocation, which is spontaneously reduced, you will see the tendon on the medial as well as posterior side. So you have to be ready for some intervention. If it is associated with elbow dislocation, there's an unstable situation and you have to uh, fix the radial head most of the times via either by a wire or a metazoo. So you should have an idea that this is not a simple fracture. This might com get complicated sometimes. There is spontaneous relocation of elbow and you are under a misunderstanding that this isolated radial neck fracture. So I think, uh, uh, Joanne, we can conclude the session. Thanks, uh, Sandeep and Viraj. Viraj was here, Sandeep, by yesterday and we yeah. went to <laughs> Riverfront and we remembered you. Yeah, yeah. I know your uh, congratulations to Goda Shri if she is around for passing. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. 100% result. <laughs> Congratulations, good one, I was Thank at Vairock yesterday with Taral and Dojuta. Yeah, we saw the photo. Came back late night and then that's why I was not very sure whether I'll be able to. But yeah. then I can't resist. And Viraj also travelled. Viraj reached uh, Nagpur last night uh, late and still. So I'm very thankful to... I prepared a talk during flight thanks to <laughs> the Indigo people. <laughs> so I could prepare. <laughs> and uh, when your name comes, Sandeep Bhai and Viraj, you see a lot of delegates, they would like to attend more than 30 <laughs> in the morning. Yeah. Thanks to all delegates. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye, Bye, Sandeep. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.